Okay, now I will give you some examples of convex function. Linear function is one example of convex function. So when you have linear function like this, when you pick any two points, the line always on the line. So you can easily check this is a convex function. Okay, a fine function is a um, more general version of linear function where some bias term as well. This is also a linear line, so when you pick any two points and uh, draw a line between them, then you can check the line always on the function. Exponential function is also a convex function, so when you draw the function shape, exponential function looks like this. So you can easily check always the two point and the line above the function value. Norms also very uh, nice example of convex functions. So what is norm? Norm usually find a vector space. A norm on vector space V is a non-negative valued scalar function that have these three property. This is called triangular inequality. So the norm of x plus norm of y always greater than or equal to a norm of x plus y, like um, the length of this this side and length of this side always greater than or equal to the length of the other side when you have triangle. When you have a scalar value a, then p the norm of a x is equal to the absolute value of a times norm of x. So this is a scaling property. And the third one is the norm of x equal to zero if and only if the x is true valued vector. Okay, so this is the definition of norm. Then let's check why norm is convex. So from the triangle inequality, we have px plus py greater than or equal to px plus y from the triangle inequality for all x and y in the vector space V. So let's, uh, let's write alpha norm of x plus 1 minus alpha p norm of y, p, p y, so that we can check the the convex function property. Okay, from the scaling property, we have p alpha x plus or minus alpha y because we know that both alpha and one minus alpha greater than or equal to zero. Oh, sorry. Okay. Right. Then again, alpha x is inside the vector space V. O minus alpha y also uh, belong to the vector space V. From this, again by triangle inequality, we have this inequality. The norm of alpha x plus or minus alpha y. Okay, so this is the end of the proof. You can easily check the norm also convex. For a convex function, we have uh, Jensen's inequality. This is, is a useful inequality for many part of series. So, basically, from the definition of convex function, we always have lambda 1 fx1 plus lambda 2 fx2 greater than or equal to f lambda 1x1 plus lambda 2x2 whenever lambda 1 plus lambda 2 is equal to 1 and lambda 1 and lambda 2 both uh, non-negative from the property of convex function. 
So from this property, you can easily check this one as well, right? So, so please do yourself. This is very easy proof. Okay. And more generally, we can say that the function value of expectation on x always less than or equal to expectation of function value of x. Here, the random variable is x. Okay, so this is Jensen's inequality uh, hold for all convex functions. Very useful. All right, for differential functions, we have more stories for convex functions. So first of all, what is differential function? Differential function means a function of uh, several real variables is said to be differentiable at a point x0. If there exists a linear map such that this hold. Okay, so so more uh, non-rigorous version of differential function means if you can find derivative, if you can define derivative for every point, then the function is differentiable. Okay, so this function is differentiable, but this function is not differentiable because this point you cannot define mathematically. The first derivative. Okay. For the differential function, you can define tangent hyperplane, which is the, the line mid at the point, okay, which approximate the very local area, right? Using a linear function or a fine function. Okay, and this is the key concept of gradient descent. So, if you have a differential function for the convex function, you always have this property. Okay, when you have a differential function, you can define gradient. Gradient is a vector consists of partial derivative. So, what is partial derivative? You no, know, this is very basic notation. Uh, I will not explain again. Uh, if you don't have, uh, if you don't know what is gradient, okay, maybe you will be very difficult, you will have very difficult time to follow this class. Okay, so please check the many material in the web. Anyway, so if you can define derivative for every point, at every point, you can define a tangent hyperplane, and the tangent hyperplane always, so actually this is a tangent hyperplane equation, and if your function is convex, the tangent hyperplane always below the true function value fx. So fy, so this is a y value, always greater than or equal to the value at the tangent hyperplane. Okay, so that is the the value on the hyper uh, tangent hyperplane fx plus gradient of fx transpose y minus x for all x and y in the domain f. Okay, so this is first order characterization of convexity. Right. So let's formally show the first order characterization of a convex function. So let's say z is theta x plus or minus theta y, and f x is always equal greater than or equal to f z plus gradient of f z transpose 
x minus z. Fy greater than or equal to Fg plus gradient of Fz transpose y minus z. Let's multiply theta here. Let's multiply or minus theta here and add. Then this is theta plus times fx plus or minus theta times fy is this greater than or equal to fg plus gradient of f g transpose theta x plus or minus theta y minus z okay and from the definition this is equal to z so this value always equal to zero. This value is gone. Okay? So which means for all x and y and for all theta in between zero and one, you have theta fx plus or minus theta fy greater than or equal to f theta x plus or minus theta y. So, when you have first order characterization like this, then the function is convex. Okay? So, we just say the, this side. If the first order characterization holds, then the function is convex. Now, the remaining thing is if the function is convex, then the, the first order characterization is hold. So that we have a if and only if a property. Okay? Right. So then, let's check this. 1 minus t fx plus t times fy greater than or equal to fx plus y minus x t from the definition of convex function, right? So when you rearrange this inequality, you have fy greater than or equal to fx plus fx plus y minus x t minus fx over t. Okay? So when t go to 0, then you have the first order characteristic. Okay? Uh, because this property hold whatever t value you have when t value between 0 and 1 from the property of convex function. So you can take the t arbitrarily close to 0. All right. Okay. So, up to now, we discussed a differentiable convex function. Then, does it mean all convex function is differentiable? No. We have non-differentiable convex function. This is the example. fx is equal to absolute value of x. Okay. And in the... So we will discuss later 
So when we have non-differential point, we can use subgradient. Okay, what is subgradient? We will discuss. Okay. Uh, second order characteristic of convex function also very important. Suppose uh, domain of f is open and f is twice differentiable. So twice differentiable means f is differentiable, so you have gradient every point. And also the gradient also differentiable. So in that case, you have Hessian. So this, the name of this is Hessian. Uh, so twice differential function have Hessian every point and if f function is convex then the Hessian also has some special property okay so f is convex if and only if the domain is convex and um, the second over other derivative, the Hessian is positive same definite for all x value in the domain. If f is twice differentiable, okay? If f is twice differentiable, then from the Hessian, we can easily check the convexity. Actually, not easy. It is, it is not easy to compute the Hessian. Also, it is not easy to check the positive same definite property for every point. Anyway, f is convex if and only if uh, the Hessian is positive same definite. Then, what is positive same definite? A oh, matrix A is positive same definite or positive definite when for every non zero vector x, x transpose ax is positive then matrix a is positive definite and what is semi-definite semi-definite allow equal to zero so the when you see this uh, sign this does not include equality but this include the equality property okay right uh, so in this slide, I, I want to explain what is local minima and what is critical point. Basically, local minima means when you uh, check the epsilon neighborhood with arbitrarily small epsilon, if the value x is uh, optimal point nearby, then we say x is local minima. And we say x is critical point of f when the gradient of f is equal to zero. Okay, f is convex when f is convex. All critical points are local minima point and local minima point are global minima point. Okay, when you have this convex function, all local minima equal to global minima. Global minima means the function value is smaller than every other function value. Critical point means the gradient is equal to zero. Okay, so this property is the main reason why we first start with convex optimization problem because it is easy to find the optimal point. Constraint minimization, we have constraint set. So, for instance, so in that case, uh, our global minima can be not a critical point. Why? For instance, in this case, uh, when you have this constraint set, constraint domain of x, then all the point has have some non-negative gradient value so, so you cannot find any critical point okay so for this constraint minimization we cannot find a critical point so we have to check another property 
So this is the one. When f is a convex function and x is a convex constraint set, and x star is a minimizer of f over the convex constraint x, which means this fx star is less than or equal to f y for y in the x, then uh, the x star satisfy this. And also, if x star satisfy this, then we can say x star is the alternate point. Okay. <clears throat> so we can easily check this. First one. Let's say x star is inside of the constraint, convex constraint x. Then basically gradient of x star is equal to zero because x star is a critical point. So you can easily check this is equal to zero hold. Let's consider x star is on the boundary. This case is real messy, but because you consider convex set, convex set also has very nice tangent line. Every convex set, when you draw a line with, with uh, your convex point, a uh, convex set boundary point, then all the set elements will be above the, the line or okay, on the one side of the line. Okay. So in this case, the, the gradient <clears throat> always, always, orthogonal to the tangent space. Okay, so this is the, the key. So when you have x star here, and when you draw the tangent line here, then the gradient at point x star always orthogonal to the tangent hyperplane of the constraint set. This is the key point of uh, this. Okay. Why this have to be orthogonal? Okay. Actually, the answer will be given to you throughout this class. Okay, we will understand very clearly why this property have to be true.